In our last video, we created a flow graph that allowed our player object to move around the scene based on where we clicked on the scene. This was using a nav mesh. And so our next step, and what we're gonna do in this video, is create a camera that can follow our player around the scene. So one of the first things that we need to do, our camera needs to know where the player object is, what the player object is, what we're trying to follow. So we're gonna do that by creating a scene variable that's gonna be a game object that's the player. And we're gonna do this for a couple reasons. One is so that our camera can follow it around. The other is that a lot of our flow graphs in the future for future videos are gonna reference the player. Our AI needs to know what the player is, what the tag of the player is, it needs to be able to damage the player and so forth. So it's handy to have a scene variable that is our player. So I'm gonna come down to my variables window down here. I'm gonna click on scene and I'm gonna type in the name player, hit enter, and I'm gonna choose the type of game object. We're just gonna store, or in other terms, we're gonna cache the game object that's the player, and it's gonna be accessible to any other objects in the scene. I could just drag the player into that slot. I don't always like to do that. I like to avoid the drag and drop assigning of things as if at all possible. So I'm gonna remove that, and then I'm gonna click on my player. I'm gonna edit the graph of player movement. Now this may not be the best place to do it, but it's where I'm gonna do it because it's the only flow graph that I have going right now. I'm gonna add a start event. And what I'm gonna do here is when the player starts, it's going to set the variable of player to itself. So I'm gonna do set variable, scene variable, player. So then what I'm gonna do is get this game object that this flow graph is attached to. So I'm gonna to go to add unit, game object, game object, get. And it's gonna return self. It's gonna return whatever object this flow graph is attached to, and in this case, the flow graph is attached to the player. And the reason we're doing this is so that in a lot of uses, you could use a command such as find game object with tag. And we could do that, but then every object in the scene is gonna have to be looking for the player and potentially you're doing that every frame. It's just kind of not very neat and tidy. I really like the idea of a scene variable. In C Sharp, this often takes the place of a static variable that any object in the scene can reference. So I'm gonna go to my main camera and I'm gonna add a component. I'm gonna add a flow machine. And then in my macros folder, I'm gonna create a bolt flow macro, I'm gonna call it camera movement. And once again, before I forget, cause I really like to forget, I'm gonna drag and drop that onto my camera so that that flow graph is attached to the camera. And I'm gonna edit that graph. I'm gonna double click on that graph. I want this camera to move and be responsive to the player's movement. So I need this to be updating its position every frame. So I'm gonna add an update event. Now what we really want to do at the end here is set the position of this camera. So I'm gonna search for transform position and I'm gonna set. Now I often can't do the entire flow graph in order. I like to have my goal at the end here and that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna create all the pieces that go here in the middle that calculate the position that we're trying to get to. So the behavior that I'm trying to create here is the camera following the player around. And for my purposes, I only want the camera to follow around on the X and Z coordinates. I don't need the camera following it on the Y coordinate so when the player goes up a little hill, the camera goes up, or when the player goes down, the camera goes down. I don't think that's gonna work very well or look very good. So the first thing we need to do is get the player position. So I'm gonna add a unit, get variable. We're gonna get a scene variable, and we're gonna get the player game object. I'm gonna drag out that value and I'm gonna search for transform position, get. So this is gonna return the current position of the player. Now again, I only wanna follow on the X and Z coordinates. So I'm gonna drag this out and I'm gonna search for vector three X and I'm gonna get that value. So that's gonna return just the X coordinate of this position. I'm also gonna drag it out and do similar with the Z direction. So we take a look at our coordinates. The blue is my Z coordinate, my Z axis. My red arrow is my x coordinate or my x axis. Now the way I want this to behave, I want it to have the same coordinate on the x axis, but not the same coordinate on the z axis. I want it to be offset in the z. I want it to be back or lower on the z axis than the player. So what we want to do in order to keep the camera back a little bit on the z axis, we want to create a variable and I'm going to call it the z offset. On my camera, I'm going to create an object variable and I'm going to name it Z offset, and it's gonna be a type float. So with that variable created, I'm gonna go back into my flow graph. What I'm gonna do now is take this node here with the vector three Z, gonna drag that out. I'm gonna look for subtract, subtract scalar, and I wanna subtract from it this variable of the Z offset. So the reason I wanted to create it as a variable rather than just say use a float literal unit is one, so that it gets labeled, it has a name, it's a Z offset, it makes it a little bit clearer, but also I can access it a little bit more easily from my inspector. We now have a X coordinate and a Z coordinate for our camera, but we also need to set its Y coordinate. 
And the way I want to deal with the Y coordinate is I just want the Y coordinate to stay the same. I don't want the Y coordinate to move. So wherever the camera starts, when you push play, that's where it's going to stay. So to do that, I'm going to search for transform position, get, and we're going to get the position of the self because this flow graph is on the camera. I'm going to drag that out and I'm going to search for vector three, Y and get. So now I've got the X component, the Y component and the Z component. And I need to put that all together in a new vector three. And then the output of this unit is gonna go into the transform position set, and then we're gonna connect the flows. So that's all we need to do with the flow graph to get our camera to follow our player. We will have to adjust our Z offset to get the player in the center of the camera, but we'll do that once we're playing the game. So back in our scene view, I'm gonna push play. Let's see how this works. So our camera has moved, and if I click on the terrain, my camera is moving with the player. But because we have the same Z coordinate as our player, we can't see our player. And that's why we need to adjust our Z offset. So here's our Z offset. If I make it to 10, now I can start to see my player, but I probably want my player to be in the middle of the screen. So maybe 25, maybe 30. Now my player is roughly in the center of my screen. And as my player moves around the scene, my camera follows the player. Now that we're back out of play mode, we need to set that Z value to the 30 or whatever value works for your setup. So with that, we've got our camera to follow our player around our scene. We can explore our scene and we stay with our character. So in our next video, we're gonna look at creating an animator controller for our player so that as the player moves around the scene, it'll run different animations. While it's standing still, it'll run an idle animation. While it's moving around the scene, it'll play a running animation. This animator controller will also be used for our AI. So when they run or stand around, they also play animations. So I hope that was helpful and I hope you'll join me for my next video.